we have here is a Santa Claus sled, a horse drawn sled, I guess, more specifically. Um, and it is in need of some repair, so we're going to show you what it looks like and we're going to take it apart and fix it up. I purchased this sled about, I don't know, almost 10 years ago, I guess. And I had repaired it some, but not a full restoration. So we're going to go through and see how my repairs held up. So the sides I didn't repair. These parts I didn't had not repaired. But the front and the back, I actually had made new boards for that. That was gone. Let's see. Take out the boards. And they're in reasonable shape. Um, they're made out of treated decking boards and painted red. And it had a seat in it. That's the main thing that's gone at the moment. As you can see here, I'm, I'm trying to do my final sanding and get all the rust and debris off as I can. If you want the best paint job, uh, you should go over this with some brake cleaner and spray it on and wipe it off. And it'll actually evaporate and leave a perfectly clean, oil-free finish. Uh, even the oils from your hand can affect your paint. I didn't have any the day we did this. So I sanded it and wiped it down with a clean shop shop rag and got off. Kept wiping it till my shop rag stayed clean, basically. Uh, you're getting off all your extra you know, debris. And this took significant time, probably probably worked on this 30, 40 minutes. And I put a piece of cardboard under my project here and, and to protect my table. We're using a, just a regular ordinary can, uh, rattle can spray paint. This stuff used to be a dollar a can. Now I'm finding it's paying four or five dollars a can for it, which is kind of crazy for what you're getting. If it had been any bigger problem, as you can see here, I've removed all the wood. I've taken a angle grinder and cut off the uh, carriage head bolts and now I've got a cup shaped wire wheel and uh, it takes several minutes here and, and you don't see it all but I, I went over this thing pretty good all directions all sides uh, took it in the shop turned it upside down did the bottoms and did every every side of this thing with this wire wheel cleaning it up and uh, you to, you to, we're going to paint it, so we're trying to get all the rust off of it that we can, the loose paint, the dirt, any kind of debris, you know, really messes you up. So, you know, like I say, you can, you can watch me do that. You want to be careful with any kind of wire wheel on a grinder um, or a drill for that matter. They'll grab pretty severely, um, even even though they're designed to go on a grinder, they're not, they're not. 
100% safe, you know, nothing with a grinder is 100% safe. So you see I've got my leather apron on, that's a heavy leather apron. I've of course got my hearing protection and my safety glasses. And uh, you just got to take your time and go easy on this. If you look at the back of your grinder as you're holding it, and you touch the, the wire wheel between, say, 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock, that's the safest place to, to use it. Now, if it gets up in a corner or, you know, got a little snag on something, it, it will still grab at that point, but it's, if that's the, what you see me doing the most is I'm, I'm kind of leaning it back and tilting it to the right just slightly, and that's, that's the portion of that that I'm, I'm using. see me doing that like I say by, by no means is this all of the footage probably took two hours to get that much cleaned up and eventually I separate out the, uh, the horse drawn part from the actual body of the sled couple bolts uh, that hold that on but I took it apart and worked on it separately here I am uh, removing the two bolts that hold the horse drawn sleigh on um, they came off relatively easy. I, I thought I was going to have to struggle with that after seeing those, struggling with those carriage bolts so long. Um, this this actually just whipped right apart, no trouble whatsoever. So I was I was glad of that. And of course, I'm saving all my hardware. I'm laying it over to the side so that I can uh, I can reuse it to attach this back. The way this thing is constructed, if I had to guess, it's, a, it's probably made in the 40s or the 50s. It was certainly stick welded and by somebody that was not a professional welder by any means. They got it to stick together, but the welds look pretty pretty rough. Um, but the, the method that is put together, if I had to guess, I would say 40s or 50s. All right, I've taken the uh, horse-drawn portion in the shop here, and uh, I'm using the uh, propane oxygen torch. What I've got there is a cutting torch. I was just too lazy to turn it to, to put my rosebud on. And uh, what what had happened to this sleigh? At some point, somebody had bent bent this. I mean, just looked like they just reared off and just grabbed it and started bending on it with something. And it was all kinked up looking, so I, I did my best and uh, I straightened it out. It looked pretty good once I got it all straightened out. I got I got it all but one little bump taken out and uh, taken out. Um, and I do this for probably an hour or so. I don't put all that footage in either, but you can only heat up a certain amount at a time, maybe an inch or two. Um, and initially I try to bend it by hand, but then you'll see I'll go ahead and I got out my bending wrenches. Uh, those bending wrenches are monkey wrenches, antique monkey wrenches that I've just welded on a piece of steel and, and made an extra handle on it so you can pull on it uh, with both hands if you need to. But I use them uh, in conjunction with each other. And it took it took right much force, as you can see by the camera moving around. I, uh, I knocked the camera over here in just a second, though, so that's what you see is it's being, uh, as I'm hitting with the hammer. There we go. Yep. And here, of course, again, I'm heating another spot. 
the, it was probably two or three feet of this that was pretty kinked up. So I, I had to do this for a while. And if you take your time with something like this and do get it hot, this was made out of black iron pipe. So it, uh, no danger in heating it. If it was galvanized pipe, you certainly wanted, wouldn't want to heat it like this because it would give off uh, poisonous fumes. But uh, this being black iron pipe wasn't, wasn't an issue. And uh, with the pipe, you really got to get it hot or you're just going to put more kinks in it. If you don't have it hot all the way around, you're not going to do anything but kink it more. You can see I'm pretty. I'm pulling on that thing pretty good. Um, even hot, it was it was more difficult to bend than I kind of anticipated. And so I do this down the side here initially, and I and I get and I do some measurements. I don't think I've shown that on a, this portion of the video, but I measure across it and kept it parallel with the other side up until the very front. In the very front of this thing, it curves out. Um, nearly 90 degrees I guess probably even 90 degrees and I had to fiddle with that right long uh, right a long time to get it to match and so I uh, probably didn't put all that video in it but uh, but knowing how to use a settling torch is definitely uh, an advantage And of course, with your torch, wear all your safety gear, your gloves, and your safety glasses, and your shield, and uh, you know, make sure you're safe with this thing. A torch is the kind of thing that is, you know, some things you can kind of learn as you go. Torch is not one of those, in my opinion. You need to take a class on that. Um, YouTube videos, uh, some of them, you know, leave out some significant parts of torch work I taught welding and torch work for, for 20 years and uh, uh, that's something that you need to you need to have real life experience with all right once we got it straightened of course we let it cool off before I did these this next part which is sanding all the little parts that I couldn't get with that wire wheel I uh, I, I did a, went over the this whole piece with the wire wheel again once I had it uh, straightened because of course the Painted chips some more and, and heating it up, you know, burns off stuff and leaves residue. So I went over it with the wire wheel again, but you, you're seeing me just go back over all the little corners with sandpaper and uh, getting it as clean as I can before I, I'm going to paint it. And we're in our shop here at the Virginia School of Traditional Arts. It's actually in my, my backyard. Um, and we have a big steel table here and we do lots of metal work on that but that's also our main shop table so I have some pieces of plywood I lay, lay on it sometimes and we, we can do other types of work on it but I'd like to protect it uh, since I do teach classes and stuff so when I go to paint this um, I do lay down some, some uh, cardboard just to protect our table from just getting paint all over it. And anytime you're spray painting, you ought to be mindful of your overspray and, and what else is it, the spray paint going to get onto. So uh, you know, do mask off anything that uh, you don't want or that you do want. Excuse me, that you do want. And again, I took another. 20 or 30 minutes doing all this sand and I just shared a little clip of it. As you can see here, I'm, I'm trying to do my final sanding and get all the rust and debris off as I can. If you want the best paint job, uh, you should go over this with some brake cleaner and spray it on and wipe it off and it'll actually evaporate and leave a perfectly clean 
oil free finish. Uh, even the oils from your hand can affect your paint. I didn't have any today we did this. So I sanded it and wiped it down with a clean shop shop rag and got off. Kept wiping it till my shop rag stayed clean basically. Uh, you're getting off all your extra you know, debris. And this took significant time, probably probably worked on this 30, 40 minutes. And I put a piece of cardboard under my project here to protect my table. We're using those just to regular ordinary can, uh, rattle can spray paint this stuff used to be a dollar a can now I'm finding this paying four or five dollars a can for it which is kind of crazy for what you're getting if it had been any bigger project I'd have set up with a you know, air, airless sprayer or um, not an airless sprayer but the uh, spray rig I use for my, my paint tractors and things but since it was so small, I used about three cans of black on this and about, I don't know, not even a half a can on the, on the metal parts. But the Virginia School of Traditional Arts is back open and running. If you're interested in a class in blacksmithing, leatherwork, horticulture, cast iron cooking, um, we'll, we'll set you up a special class. We're not, we're not putting out dates. We're just doing classes upon demand. So... Uh, all the information for that will be down in the description. Uh, hope you all have a nice day.